Um, I'm, I'm happy to also share with you that, um, you know, we also have South Africa in the room. And one of the things I also wanted to do was, you know, give this platform so that we can understand what's going on on ground. And I hope that really helped. So I'll, please join me in welcoming Shakira Martin to the stage. Awesome. Let's talk about um, South Africa. Good morning, everybody. It's so nice to see you again this morning. Um, I have a lot to speak about, um, and I don't think 15 minutes is enough, but this is my second opportunity on stage. Uh, just to introduce myself again, um, I'm the Trade Commissioner for the South African government, and I am based in Chicago, but responsible for all the Midwest states as well as the West Coast. And the primary responsibility is to focus on promoting foreign direct investment flows into South Africa, as well as exports of South African goods and services into the USA. And I wanted to start off by just providing an overview of the African continent to contextualize where South Africa is. Usually with audiences, many of them are not aware that South Africa is a country on its own. However, I'm speaking to people here who have visited Africa and uh, South Africa on many occasions and know very well where it is. I find myself uh, often frustrated in Chicago when I get asked where in South Africa and they don't understand that South Africa is a country. Yes, the name of the country is South Africa. It's at the bottom and I've, I've highlighted um, the three regional um, economic blocks um, that's of primary importance uh, to the African uh, free trade uh, agreement. Uh, I will get into that later. Um, the gentleman, uh, Mr. Albert from the World Bank, mentioned the challenges in terms of intra-African trade. Um, between 2007 and 2011, it was just 11% of the continent's total trade. And we would like to see that increase significantly. We believe that regional integration is key to success uh, and, and key to inclusive growth. Uh, the next slide. Again, I found it very interesting. I'm an avid follower of Al Jazeera, and um, they and, and others have created a map whereby they showcase the different mineral and other resource-rich strengths of the African continent. It just shows that we are so rich and we have such a diverse array of commodities and minerals, but we need to prioritize more on diversification and industrial beneficiation. Um, many presenters and speakers have spoken about these stats, um, but I thought it was useful, although it's a bit dated, to show that indeed um, the African continent has significantly improved over the decades. You see that uh, there's been an increase in the middle class between 2001 and 2011, and the poverty rates have declined. Um, the, there was also information in terms of the top 10 fastest growing economies in 2018, uh, and that was also from the World Bank. And I found it really, really interesting that African countries feature significantly on this list. And that's something that shouldn't be ignored. I, w I feel that any presentation or discussion about South Africa should not go ignored without putting a picture of Mandela in it, because that's really a key strength um, that we have. Um, and uh, we have the centennial celebrations um, of Mandela this year. We're actually working with the Chicago Philharmonic Orchestra, and we have this huge event that's happening in Chicago and across different states in the Midwest. My colleague, Mr. Terence Chiseve, is also with me. I, I omitted to introduce him. Terence, would you be able to stand, please? Because he's the, the key coordinator. Uh, of the uh, projects around uh, Mandela Day and celebrating Mandela. Uh, but however, I digress. The, the information that I also wanted to, to talk about in terms of Africa is that really we are so, so much advanced in terms of tech hubs and tech infrastructure, and there's so much a, a focus on infrastructure development as well. And that's something that we as South Africans 
also are focusing on. Again, these stats are not the latest stats, but these stats have been mentioned frequently by many of the presenters as well. The fact that Africa owns 60% of the world's uncultivated arable land, the fact that in a few years to come, 50% of the portion of Africans will be living in cities. Uh, there's a huge spending power as well that's available, and there's a huge um, um, market of middle-income people, so there's huge opportunities untapped for U.S. companies. So I've spoken about the African continent, briefly I've touched on it, but I love this picture and that's why this, it, it, it took so much of storage space on my computer because it illustrates the beautiful uh, country that I, I come from, South Africa, and the fact that we have uh, huge uh, tourist uh, numbers visiting South Africa frequently, the fact that Cape Town is regularly on the list of the most beautiful cities in the world, the most elegant cities in the world, uh, voted by Telegraph, a UK newspaper, as actually the best city in the world to visit and, and live in. Uh, besides that, we have many natural uh, heritage sites, and there's just a, a lot to do in South Africa. So we urge you to visit as well. I have this map that was developed by our statistics bureau, and it focuses on our GDP on a province or state level. And we found it to be very interesting that Gauteng's economy was roughly the same size of Morocco in 2016. Uh, and we were using nominal GDP figures. And the, the second largest province, KwaZulu-Natal, had similar output to Tanzania, and the Northern Cape, uh, that to Bermuda. Uh, I don't know if you can see those figures there. However, what we also did is uh, we extrapolated the figures of the provinces and compared them uh, to other African countries. And you will see that um, Gauteng is actually uh, the seventh largest in terms of GDP in Africa. And uh, it was ranked seventh, and KwaZulu Natal was ranked 12. I wish, uh, I wish you could see that more clearly, but I can share the, this information with you. The, this, this slide talks about GDP ca uh, per capita, because we speak about the fact that population can skew the GDP uh, figures. So if we look at uh, GDP ca uh, per, per capita, we see that um, all of South African provinces surpass many of the African countries. In fact, it surpasses Nigeria on a per capita basis. And um, just, just interesting facts to mention. That's all. And uh, according to the United Nations, South Africa is ranked the 38th largest economy in the world. Uh, and if we compare to the USA, we are as large as the state of Missouri, which is the 22nd richest state in the USA. So how do we compare in terms of growth rates? Before we do that, I need to ask, how many more minutes do I have? Five and a half, oh my word, okay. So uh, we did very well um, in quarter three, we had 3.1% of a growth rate, uh, and uh, overall in 2017, 1.3%. The rating agencies, um, have been uh, very positive about our outlook for 2018, given our recent political changes. Uh, and I've, I've mentioned um, this information yesterday. I won't delve into it, given the time constraints. I chose to put a lot of pictures up on this presentation because um, I, I wanted to showcase the capabilities of different South African industry. And it's just interesting to note that South Africa has been involved in various projects across the world, uh, a lot in the Middle East. And of course, we hosted the 2010 Soccer Cup. And we have these stadiums that were built on time using South African um, resources and capabilities. And uh, we are still using them, and they are quite successful. Um, if we look at our export partners, Obviously, China takes a, a huge chunk of that, but then we still have uh, traditional partners featuring as well, including the USA. Um, the USA is our second largest export partner and our third largest import partner. And uh, what we are exporting, unfortunately, is primarily commodities related, 
but we would like to focus more on uh, those uh, beneficiated products. We export items such as motor vehicles, mohair, macadamia nuts, citrus fruit, deciduous, processed fruit juices, defense items, luxury mar marine craft, and the list goes on because of our diversified export base. Uh, what we are exporting to the USA, there is a skew towards commodities, but we also have the automotive sector featuring prominently. I have a list of the top five exports to the US and then the imports. Um, I can discuss this in detail with you at a later stage on a one-on-one basis. I thought it was interesting to feature the cities that we are trading uh, um, most uh, with. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about is, besides mention that Elon Musk is South African born and has South African origin, <laughs> is that we have a lot of investment into, um, into the USA by South African companies. One example, it's not as big as Mexican companies, for example, but $9 billion from a South African company in Louisiana in an ethane cracker. Uh, we have uh, asset management and fleet management systems in the USA, and we have acquired pulp and paper mills. SAPI has historically been in the USA for decades. I don't know if anybody has tried uh, Nando's and is aware of Nando's, and that's very active uh, in the US in Chicago and Washington. And we have another fast food chain that's opening up soon. I was going to go into um, our FDI figures, but I, will, I was then gonna focus on the different US companies in South Africa. The list is exhaustive. In fact, we have a partnership between Boeing and South African Airways, focusing on biofuels, of which the first pilot trip occurred in 2016. Uh, we have Amazon, we have cloud computing, cloud services, we have the automotive sector. I was going to go into detail uh, in terms of our trade agreements and then the African continental free trade area, but uh, given the time constraints, I won't. It's just an enormous uh, benefit that US companies should harness in terms of entering the African market. And then, um, we have various trade agreements as a country with uh, Europe, um, with uh, India, uh, that's in process, and with the rest of Africa, and that's something to harness. Um, we believe that South Africa has been the major beneficiary of AGOA compared to the rest of the world, and we're actually focusing on sending um, AGOA-centric um, delegations from South Africa to the US later in the year. We're collaborating this with the Western Cape and KwaZulu Natal. We actually do work with the US Trade Hub. They have funded African uh, companies, including South African uh, trade shows, such as, for example, the Magic Show in Vegas. And, and regarding the reverse mission that, hap that happened this week, we also were uh, uh, involved in a small scale. It in also included not just our uh, provinces, but our state-owned enterprise, trans, uh, the Portnet. Uh, and then um, I will skip on uh, AGOA. I've mentioned the sectors. We have a host of uh, financial and non-financial support that we provide two companies wishing to locate in South Africa and using it as a regional headquarters as well as to um, manufacture. I can go into details on that on a sector level. We have a host of trade shows, uh, conferences, symposium events. Some that I haven't mentioned is the Africa Energy in Daba that's happening in February 2019. Uh, there, there, there's a list of that that I can share with you. We have various services that we offer at the mission. We would like to support anybody who would like to enter the market. And we also have various special economic zones. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but that's a list of the various multinationals, a snapshot, because there's many more, that are already in South Africa and the different uh, awards we've been provided for in terms of our investment attractiveness. I'm sorry that I had to go quickly, but I'm available to speak one-on-one -on, -one on, a, on a detailed um, industry and, and product level um, discussion on opportunities. Thank you. Thank you.